<laughs> What's up, dog? What's up, Will Smith? How you doing, man? <laughs> What's up? What's up? It's your boy Will Smith with Red and Bold. I'm here with my co-host Joe Mobley. We are back, baby. We are um, up up against the new season of football. We are coming off a Super Bowl win, so we are defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Praise football Lord. Chiefs, baby. Yeah. How you been? What's up, been everybody? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Good to good good to be back in here again, man. I tell you, well, I really, uh, I really missed it, man. I mean, just on a quick note, man, I'm glad just to be here. I mean, I ended up in the hospital on Super Bowl Sunday. So what? us not being able to celebrate with everybody and to, uh, to timely discuss uh, Ben Victorious, that's on me. Uh, but God is good. I'm still here. So amen. Amen. Yeah, for sure. So uh, yeah. before we even jump into it, man, we're going to uh, give a shout out to um, our sponsors. Of course, J-Mo's Barbecue, man. Make sure y'all go ahead and buy some of that sauce from his website, jmosbbq.com, J-Mo's Barbecue, baby. So get some of that sauce. Make sure you place your order. By. I have some. It is very good. Um, yes. I think I think it's just your family can cook, man. Just like your brother made some stuff when I came in town uh, for the draft and and he was cooking up some stuff, man. I still haven't got to taste your ribs yet and um, your food, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that next time I am in town, sir. And I yes, come by. Sir. I was able to come through uh, uh, Joe's house, man, and we hung out for a little bit. And, you know, he had a business meeting and stuff. He was doing his thing. But I got to see my see my boy while I was in town. And so, uh, yeah, but yeah shout out blessing. to Yes, jmosbbq.com, y'all. We are also sponsored by Legacy AD, a faith-based comic book. Make sure you check that out. It's about a young man named Deacon Foster, a detective in Atlanta uh, who fights crime and he fights evil spirits. So be sure to check that out. That's LegacyADCartoon.Squarespace.com. Also, a huge shout out to our sponsor, Ozell Brand. That's OzellBrand.com, where you can buy football cleats. Um, there are also soccer cleats, and he also has some fashion sneakers on sale. He's also getting into dress shoes. And so uh, those haven't released yet. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. I don't know if you wanted me to tell anybody yet, but I know he posted it. So I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> but shout out to Titus Golden of Ozell Brand, man. Appreciate him. And uh, What's up, Titus? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all yeah, got to connect, man. Have y'all connected yet in KC, man? Man, nah, you know, bro. And I, I'm, you know, I'm about the shoes, brother. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't think that I was, like, going to turn into that. But, you know, bro, I, I, my shoe collection has – has grown tremendously. You know, back in the day, I only had one pair of Jordans. And oh, I thought okay. I, had, I thought I had made it in the eighth grade. I had on the North Carolina Blues. Ooh. Hey, man, hold on a second. Couldn't tell you nothing. Oh, man, you couldn't tell me nothing. I got to school. Everybody was like, hey, you know, them are nice, but they are the old. That's not the new ones. Oh, like, man. They was on you like that? Hold up. You know, I thought I had done just for feet back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> just for feet. Yeah. No, oh, man, man, that was for real. Now, if I can't, well, I just want to shout out the church real quick. Uh, Christian Charity Church this week, Vacation Bible School taking place. Light Mill served at 545. Come on out and fellowship with us. We got classes for, for everybody. 11,000 Ruskin Way, Kansas City, Missouri. Pastors Arthur L. Mobley Jr. and the third. Uh, taking care of business, sharing the gospel, bringing the word. We got other teachers in there, y'all. The kids are having a great time. And you know, the little light dinner they serving at 545 is not bad either. Matter of fact, on Friday, today, we're ha having a little bit of brisket. J Mo's, mm. it'll be there. All you might right. get in there, grab you a slice and a little sauce. But mm. anyway, you know, uh, just come on out. We can learn, learn a little bit more about God's word together and get a little bit stronger. Sounds good, man. All right, and it is Red Friday, man. We got a game of football coming up next week, the Hall of Fame game. So it's Red Friday. You know what I'm saying? We talking Chiefs football. We about to jump into it. So Let's my first it. question, man, or our first topic is, and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to let you go ahead and respond first, man. It's, um, are you, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, 
Um, are you concerned about the Chris Jones contract situation? How how are you feeling about that currently? I think that we would be prematurely panicking at this point. Um, I think we still have time. Uh, I don't like it on a scale of one to ten. Uh, my level of concern right now is probably about a six. I think we should be concerned that it's taking so long. I don't feel like this has to be hard. Uh, the man has made it plain. He don't have to be number one, but he does want to be number two. And I think he's proven that. Um, I don't know how much leverage as, as, a, as a negotiator that you have. I'm wondering, are we waiting on the market to really finally settle itself? Um, in regards to linemen, defensive linemen with the skill set, uh, you know, that Chris Jones has. But the reality of it is, you know, there's one man out there that's even coming close to what he's doing. Aaron Donald is number one. I mean, I don't think Chris Jones even, you know, has at this point any anything to say. Mm -hmm. But after Aaron Donald, give me Chris Jones. And he belongs to the Kansas City Chiefs. And you're starting to see players. Now, this is the part I don't care for that does push me to a six instead of a five mm -hmm. is that you're starting to see players saying that things don't feel the same mm -hmm. without him being in camp. And I think that you want that camaraderie. You you want to be able to, you know, to some extent find a healthy balance and say, we need this guy. You know, we need this guy here. I understand Beach's point. To some extent, you know, we got to let the market speak for itself. But we're certainly not looking at a situation where this guy is going to sit out for a year or anything no, like no. that. He, he ain't trying to lose money like that. Cause, not I mean, like that. The and it's day, already feels... cost 50 a day. And the Chiefs going to have to pay that. That 50 a day, you know, I think you got to pay that. You, know, you got to pay that. Yeah, he still do 29, day. about 29 million this year, 28 to 29 million this year. So um um he would be uh, it would be foolish to bypass that and sit out. You're not doing yourself any favors by doing that. Um I would say for me uh my concern may be a seven maybe um at first um I mean because it is it is going over into training camp he's missed some days already of course he has a fifty thousand dollar fine and um it's uh you know, and everybody knows on the team that they're a better defense with Chris Jones than without. Um, they did interview. I, I saw a live interview today with Willie Gay, and they asked him about it. And he said, "He said we're rolling." He said, "Uh, of course, you know, we 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 want him to be here, but I mean, you have to go with who's out there." And so he's like, "We're rolling." He's like, "When Chris comes back, you know, of course we'll be. Of course, you're a better defense with him," and so. Nobody, uh, I mean, and of course he was the best, he was the best defensive tackle last year, even better than what Aaron Jones did, even stats wise. He was like first in a, a majority of the categories and he had the most sacks. He had 15 and a half sacks. And so we know the force and the the attention that Chris Jones demands, right? Like he gets double teamed a lot. Uh, he's a force of nature on the inside. Uh, he can go to the outside. The sack he got against Joe Burrow. He was lined up at DN position um, in the, in the um, AFC Championship game, and so um, yeah, it's it's a seven right now because the thing is, like, let's say um, he goes ahead and plays, and they don't get a contract done. Essentially, he's probably going to go get the bag, which I'm not mad at him because you play for championships, and he has two championships now. And so if you can cash out again, you know, and get a big big payday, why not? So I, I understand it from a business side of it in the business perspective i can understand it um i don't know if you'll be able to um you know a lot of times we say hey, you ain't gonna find another this or that and i definitely believe that about patrick Mahomes. <laughs> and uh yeah. but but there's, there's there's always gonna be some some big dude that comes in that middle you know what i'm saying it may take us uh a year, some years to find another chris jones like that but um because they don't grow on trees but um i'm sure eventually like uh we be able to find some guys along, and we and we're building a pretty good defensive line now. I think we're deep at defensive line. Uh, when you think about Tashawn Ward and uh, Derek Nadi, they brought in Keandre Coburn, who I like a lot, a run stuffing type dude, has a high motor. And so, um, but at this point, I mean, 
we de- we definitely want Chris Jones on the field. So yeah, you you want him on you want him on the field, and I agree with you, Bill. I mean, no Patrick Mahomes in that category. If we had to choose a defensive lineman, that probably belongs to Aaron Donald. But Chris Jones is one of those guys that can come in, like you said, and uh, influence the game in a play and make up his mind, literally tell you before it happens, hey, this is going down. And it's not really much that anybody can do about it. And in that regard, he's one of the few defensive linemen that I can think of in the league that have that ability right now. You know, yeah. you got to pay the man. You got to pay him. That's the bottom line. Got to pay him that money. Got to pay the cost to be the boss. That's pay all. Pay him the money. Pay him. Great. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, all right, man. So, you're you're a six and I'm at a seven. So, we're not far apart, man. Um, so, on the offensive side, um, besides Patrick Mahomes, uh, which player are you most excited to see on the field this season? On the offensive side of the ball. I think from an offensive perspective, for me, um, I, I don't look at a specialty like player like a wide receiver or or a running back right now, or even a tight end. I mean, I, Kelsey's going to be Kelsey, you know, Patrick going to be Patrick. But I think I'm excited about our, our our front three, our center and our two guards. I don't think it gets any better than what we have. I honestly believe that tandem in and of itself is the best uh, in the NFL. And I don't feel like those three guys in the middle. I'll take one guy on the offensive side. One guy. If there's one person. I'll take take our center. I'll take our center. Creed? Yeah, I'll take him. You watching watching Creed Humphrey the whole game? Bro, he's very (laughs) good. I mean, as a former offensive lineman. I'm about to say, you're so offensive lineman. You know, I'm offensive line. Excuse me for, you know, loving the big boys. But when the Hawks get ready to roll, brother, I appreciate it. And you look at Creed Humphrey, um, the man the man never gives up. I got to choose one. I'll choose him. That don't, that don't bother me. Offensively, I'm interested to see what Creed Humphrey and the supporting cast that following his leadership, what they're going to do this year. I, I, I appreciate the fact that I think that, He's leading a group of horses, and his example, his endurance, his durability, mm-hmm. all of those things come into play. The dude is tough, man. He's, yeah, he's not a you, joke. You know what Creed Humphrey's going to do. You know who he's been since he's since he's been the starter as a rookie. He's been doing his thing. And so wow. I think the question who you got to look at is like, okay, what's Donovan Smith going to do or what is Juwan Taylor going to do? Those are the two new additions. One of those guys. That's what I would say, bro. I, I mean, think they you, gonna, you have your. I think they're gonna follow you. You follow suit. Like mm-hmm. if I'm in a huddle, and we're all starting linemen, this is even, you know, this is early as high school. Uh-huh. Uh, um, you can't be the guy who's not handling your guy mm-hmm. because then, you know, we have to talk, talk about that. And I don't. I mean, I took it to be with both of the, the tackles that we have at this time, and some of the backup offensive linemen that we have, that it's a well-understood thing that it's expected that business is handled. And I like I like our tackles. I didn't think that we would lose um, – good well, gosh, Jackson. I can't even – Orlando Brown. Uh, yeah, I didn't think we would lose him. But in the same breath, you know – <laughs> I I don't I mean he was cool but yeah he was, you know, he was not, cool he was cool but he's not <laughs> he's not shut it I'm not I mean I don't feel like he's not gonna do nothing special for Joe Burrow no you know or whatever the case is it's not gonna help him when we get ready to play him I uh, definitely not, especially, not especially, especially we know his weaknesses so. They're not in a better situation than they were last season because they have Orlando Brown. Save well, him. If you talk to a Bengals the- fan, if you talk to a Bengals fan, they they'll say that they are because their other offensive linemen and tackle were just that bad. So Orlando Brown more than likely is an upgrade. I mean, he does. Um, 
we we know that what is one weakness is it's the speed rushing. So, but when when you try to bull rush Orlando Brown and try to use power, nah, he gonna he gonna handle that. So, I mean, he's uh, I, I guess I'll say he's uh better than what they had, but you know, it is what it is in that regard. So I'm not I'm not I'll say this I'm not sad that he's gone or like dang I wish he was still here, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah for me, uh, I feel the- like he's a left tackle. I mean, he he took the bag. You know, I mean, I ain't mad. You you took the back. What does he have? Yeah. One championship up under his belt or two? I think he got at least one. He was here on one. I don't think yeah, he, he got one. On. He got a championship up under his belt. He got to go to a team that, you know, legitimately can argue that they're a contender. Uh, and, you know, you have your motivation to contribute. Joe Burrow is a good quarterback, you know, but the reality of the situation is maybe I'm biased, but the name of the show is Red and Bold, and all, all roads lead to Kansas City. You want to go to Super Bowl, you got to come through here. All right, all right. Let me let me get my offensive player because we, we about to go into a whole nother topic. But um, yeah. So for me, I think this um, Sky Moore is. I'm interested to see his jump in this second season because of the offensive playbook being, you know, so um, so complicated, or or should I say, it's very in depth. Um, and Andy Reid likes all of his wide receivers to know all the positions, and he likes to inter- use them interchangeably, uh, whether it's the X or the Z. Or and so, yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited about seeing Sky Moore, man. I think he's gonna be, I think he's gonna be, I'm gonna say leaps and bounds better, but I feel like he's really gonna take advantage of the opportunity. He's gonna get more targets. He's a very skilled after the catch. You know what I'm saying? Good route runner. And and when him and Mahomes, because there were some times where him and Mahomes weren't really on the same page a couple times and an interception happened or incompletion where almost got intercepted because they weren't on the same page. And I don't know if Sky ran the wrong route or, you know, but at any rate, um, he's he's going to know the playbook a lot better. And him and Mahomes have got a lot more reps together. So that's going to be, that's going to be a pretty good, scary combination, man. So I'm excited about seeing Sky more. And yeah, so, um, I mean, Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting you mention that, but even his teammates, or his former teammates in college, still say that the Chiefs got a steal when they got Sky Moore. Like they obviously he was impressive enough to them that they they still hold him in high high regard. So I I look forward to that too, brother. I look forward to it. Yeah. yeah. So on that same question, who's the 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 one player on the defensive side of the ball that you were excited to see this season? I think on the defensive side of the ball, uh, what I'm most excited to see this season or who I will be most excited to see this season, you know, not that I feel like he can do any better uh, than what he's already done, but I'm, our linebacking core to me, but I mean, one player, I'll take, you know, Bolden in the middle. I feel like that the dude, good God, you know, he's just, I mean, he's a man child. He's been that way since he's got here. I feel like his confidence level's only going to grow. He knows what to expect. And now you not only have Willie Gay with you, but you have, you know, this new gentleman that we have and my understanding that our other outside linebacker that we have now is very much like for real, for real. Don't know his name, but I've only heard good things about him. I'm looking at, you know, talking about the new addition that the guy that we signed drew tranquil or yeah, that tranquil. Uh Like, I mean, you put him with Willie Gay and, and I mean, I, I feel good about that. I don't think our defensive line, like you said, mm-hmm. I don't feel like we're suffering. I do think we'll we'll get through this period with Chris Jones. I also think it's going – some of the things we're going to hear are going to get worse before they get better. And that's normally how it happens with these holdout situations. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we're going to hear some stuff. Uh, some – I mean, the reality of it is you got to – you got to you gotta lead your front office to believe you're not coming or right, that you won't come if they don't – you know, make a move that y'all can find amicably agreeable. But the reality of it is, yes, it's Bolton, linebacker core. I'm excited to see what does that look like when you have three formidable 
you know, linebackers that are handling it. But we know what we can expect from our defensive line. Uh, they know the caliber of expectation that we have. And again, I still believe we'll have Chris Jones, but to be able to have the support that you're going to have back there, it should make everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. You won't be running all. I don't feel like we're going to be getting ran all. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, especially with um, yeah, the the depth we have in D line and like I said, Coburn. I'm looking for Coburn to possibly make some uh, a good contribution this season. The player I'm looking at on the defensive side that I really want to see um, so again, it's a year or two player um, Trent McDuffie um at that corner position. Man, he didn't play the whole season last year. Had an injury. Um, he got injured in that uh Cardinals game, first game of the season, and uh. When he came back, though, man, you you know McDuffie, he was he was nice, man. Uh, the Chiefs defense improved. They improved um, with the passing defense. I I'll have to see what that uh, their ranking was uh, then, but I I do know that teams weren't uh, completing as many passes often when McDuffie came back, and so and a um, well, shout out to uh, the guys that held it down. You know, saying uh, Joshua Williams and um, yeah. Jalen Watson while he was out, and so um, but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what what McDuffie does, like, a, cause you know, this is a passing league now, so you know, all the, the receivers are on another level, and so you have to be able to uh, at least limit the big plays. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I like uh, like to look at him and and hope that we'll get to see uh. Hope we'll get to see, you know, more of what we saw toward the end when he did get to play a little bit more. It's obvious that the skill set is there. I mean, dude hurt himself playing hard. You know what I'm saying? I always appreciate the fact that he's going for it. And, and um, you know, I mean, hey, man, I, from a defensive perspective, just to just to kind of shift the, the viewpoint or not even the viewpoint, for, but from a different perspective, uh, honestly, I feel like our defense is going to be what we're going to be looking at this year. I, I know we get excited about our offense, but I do believe that our defense this year is going to be something that we're going to be able to be, as Chief fans, excited about. And I think that that's going to be different for teams because normally when you come to Kansas City, it's been, you know, what are we going to do with Patrick Mahomes? What are we going to do with this offense? I do think that our defense, when they catch their stride, and I believe they're going to come out the gate swinging, I think our defense is going to what people are going to look at like, Good God, man. Do we really have to go deal with them? Yeah, man, because um, one thing Mahomes has never had is um, a top five defense. And I don't think we'll be top five, but I do believe that they can be – or the, I believe they will be a top ten defense. Now, we did have, like, in 2019 and 2020, they had the number ten scoring defense Um, once the season was over. Both of those seasons were Super Bowl seasons, back-to-back. Um, ended up losing the second one. But if you give Mahomes a top – 10 defense man it's um and, and let alone like one day hopefully a, a top five then it's going to be a scary situation but I think I mean we do great with uh, mid to average defenses so a top 10 you know that's a scary situation for other teams and I believe that the Chiefs will definitely be a top 10 defense this season yeah, easily I think that people I mean top 10 I'm I'm gonna step out and be a little bit bolder I'm gonna go say I think we're a top five. Ooh. And the reason I say that is because <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I would go top two. I am mad at it. I'm going top five because I can't think of I can't think of many defenses that hold the skill set that we have. You can make us number five on the top five, but I can't think of many defenses that have the skill set that we have, uh the scheme. Uh, at first, I really kind of questioned our defensive coordinator. Like, <sighs> like I wasn't overwhelmed with him, uh, you know, with with his schemes and the different things he was drawing up. I but, like bags, man. I mean, but man, we look, start off I mean, a little slow sometimes. But like, I love I love the fact that he makes adjustments. He doesn't. Yeah, he does. You know, he, he does make adjustments. But he's raising men. I mean, mm-hmm. He's raising men out here on the defensive side of the ball. These the secondary is a great example of what he's doing. And he's bringing these guys in. They're coming in playing youngest rookies, and he's putting the weight on them and requiring them to show up. 
And so my thing with that is, if you're being required to show up and to grow, I mean, bro, I, I, I think that we haven't even began to discuss, you know, some of the, the new talent mm-hmm. that that we have here now, some of the improvements that have been been made and, you know, the expectation, yeah, not only one for McDuffie as a rookie, you want to see him look better in the second year start, but I want even our safety, bro. I expect more out of him. So oh, I yeah, can't think yeah. Brian Cook. Listen, huh? Brian Cook. No, I appreciate Justin him. Justin Reed. He's, yeah, he, Justin Reed. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, brother. I expect more. I, I mean, you did okay, but he he had was, some he had some 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 shining plays last season. I like no, what Justin Reed brought to the table. He was physical. I know. needed to be nasty. Yeah, yeah. I need, so. you, I need you to be nasty, nasty. <laughs> you know, nasty with it. I got nasty. you, man. So yeah. that's uh that's what we got for today, man. We're gonna go ahead and uh get out of here. Um just wanted to uh touch base back with all of you, all of you, all of our viewers and and let y'all know, man, like Chief season is back. We are excited. Can't wait Red and Bold is back. We Red back. And, yeah, Red and Bold is back, baby. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna try to drop every uh Friday. Um, or every Saturday, you know. So we'll 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 get it in, man. We're gonna get it in, you know. Hey, so bro, we going we back, sure. man. We going right. back. We going back. Hey, back I'm not back, tiptoeing. Back, <laughs> ain't no tiptoeing. Ain't no tiptoeing. No, no, none of that. Hey, we going back. You hear hey, me? Y'all remember it? Joe said we're gonna have a top five defense, and we're going back to the Super Bowl. We're I believe going we're back. going back to the Super Bowl also. I ain't gonna speak against that. You know what I'm saying? I'm we're all for that. Back. So it's get red and bold. Hey. We get out of here. Philly, I do Philly again. I'm sorry, I probably, I'm not messing up the time, but we do Philly again. I don't care. We're going back. All right, yeah, we we going back. I don't know why he moved. And uh, Aaron, <laughs> we don't care about you moving. We be looking for you too. We are going back. Sorry. All right. All right, y'all. Red and bold. Be sure to follow us at R E D A N D B O L D on Twitter. Uh, be sure to follow MTMV Sports, y'all. MTMVPN.com. Uh, we love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love it's red man. and bold. Holla back. God bless you. Born and raised in Kansas City, and there's only one team I root for. On game day, you'll see me in my Chiefs gear. To complete the fit, you gotta have the right kicks. And for me, that's Ozell brand. They have the look and the feel of excellence. Ozell brand. It's not just a brand, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Come on, let go, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanna be remembered for the good I did, not for accolades and accomplishments. Did I treat people with the love of God? Walk in my purpose, seeking no applause. Did I tear down idols that were in my way? And in my darkest moments, did I keep the faith? Did I give a message, man, forget the fame? Can't allow our hearts to remain the same. We need to change. Get the money, the cars, and the clothes. None of that's gonna last when it's our time to go. Gotta stay focused, gotta run your race. Time to get to it, cause we in the last days. Tell me what's your legacy? What's your legacy? What's your legacy? Now I know some people like to grill out, but the question is, do you know how to barbecue? I mean, can you take your meats to another level? Cause you see, barbecuing is an art form and the finishing touch is always the sauce. That's why you need J-Mo's barbecue sauce with its savory, sweet and tasty glaze. Get lost in the sauce. Order now at jmosbbq.com. J-Mo's barbecue and grill. Upgrade your meats.